Yo, hey, what's up, guys? I've been playing a lot of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and um, I've been trying to do all the challenges and stuff. So I recently beat the uh, Ruler of the Outer Worlds, which is the which is a really, really difficult challenge. It's very hard. I felt like making a video on it. Uh, I'm not streaming right now. I just kind of like some offline stuff. It was very challenging and uh, it felt a lot like Prague. So I wanted to just talk about it for anybody that is also wanting to do it. I'm sure there's a lot of different ways that you could do it, but I'm really bad at this game. So I needed every single advantage imaginable. This challenge basically is five rounds. And the first round is Kajada and Phoenix. The second round is uh, Bahamut and Titan. The third round is Odin and Alexander. The fourth round is Gilgamesh. And the fifth round is Sephiroth. So I want to talk about the materials set up. I want to talk about the strategies that I use for each one. This took me probably like three days, not like three full days, but you know, like eh, somewhere around maybe maybe 20 hours, I think. My party comp is uh, Yuffie, Barrett, and uh, Cloud. I really like the ranged abilities. Like, I have some friends, uh, they use either Tifa or Red, and I wasn't really a fan of that because mm -hmm. sometimes you have to kite, and when you have to kite, I had trouble building ATB with those characters. I kind of like the Yuffie's both ranged and physical, and so is Cloud. So yeah, so I have Healing and Magnify, uh, then I have Revival. Prayer is, I want to say, a must-have. ATB Boost, it's also super good. Limit siphon so the strategy that i went with was the um i give all of my limit break to cloud all the time my gear that i use it's like the purple sword and i use the ascension equipment which basically gives you a level one lb like your next level lb so then you only have to do uh one synergy to get uh, access to finishing touch so that's mostly what i did with the limit siphon and then uh elemental uh this i think is mandatory is elemental and fire so i have elemental fire on all my characters uh, and the reason why that i think it's mandatory is because you want to make each fight as easy as possible and you want to be able to get to the final fights like you know round four and round five as much as possible and in the first round with kajada and phoenix uh phoenix is insanely obnoxious because you cannot kill him you have to kill kajada first then you have to kill phoenix then you kill kajada again and you can basically if you have fire elemental you can ignore phoenix entirely and just beat the living shit out of kajada fire also helps against kajada and it also helps on sephiroth so i had elemental fire and then first strike mandatory uh i like steadfast block i'm a big blocker i try to use punisher and perfect block as much as i can i like that uh atb assist precision defense uh, like I said, I'm bad, so I need all the iframes I can get. Uh, HP up, I think, is mandatory, and MP up. Uh, you can swap out the MP. I use MP because I like to cure bomb a lot. Even if only like two people, like maybe one person's really low and one person's like maybe 60%, uh, I'll still cure bomb regardless. Magnify barrier. Uh, okay, so I don't think barrier is absolutely mandatory, but it really, really, really fucking helps when you fight Sephiroth. In my opinion, you don't have to have it, but you probably should have it. Like it will make Sephiroth easier and he's already a really annoying fight. I think barrier is really good. Prayer, you'll want assess, unfortunately, because the game is dumb and you need to assess virtual Sephiroth. I mean, I guess you don't have to, but I did. A revival, uh, re-raise is really good. You don't use it like all the time, obviously, because it costs so much mana, but it can really, really, really be handy. So I put it on uh, elemental fire. First strike, uh, limit support. This is really important for the build that I used um, because basically you you filter, like Barrett isn't going to gain any um, uh, limit break, but uh, all of his limit break will go to Cloud and Yuffie and then Cloud is just going to siphon from Yuffie. So basically all of the limit break is going to be filtered to to Cloud. That's, that's what I did. HP up, healing, uh, cleansing. Uh, so cleansing is... Man, it's really lame because sometimes you never use it. And then other times when I fought Gilgamesh, he will frog me like three times. And it's really annoying. So I put it on there just because if he frogs like one or two people, that's pretty much game over. Magnify healing. So basically this setup, Cloud and Yuffie can cure bomb, but Barrett can only single target. Uh, revival, re-raise, another cleansing just in case Barrett gets CC'd, uh, Yuffie can cleanse him. Elemental, 
fire again. I would say probably one of the most, if not the most important thing is elemental fire in this. <laughs> you want to either be invuln to fire damage or absorb fire damage. Precision defense. Uh, so the reason why she has this is because uh, in Sephiroth, which I'll talk about later, the most powerful thing you can do against Sephiroth is perfect block his uh, shadow chains. Uh, if you do not perfect block his shadow chains, it makes the fight way harder. Like if you are able to to perfect block even just one or two of those shadow chains, then it makes the fight so much easier. And I'll explain that more when we get there. Uh, HP up. If you don't have HP up, what I have found is you, if you just instantly dies to Sephiroth. So prayer, uh, prayer is uh, super super good and binding. Um, so sleep, silence, and berserk. So you don't have to have this, but um, you can put Titan to sleep, which can be helpful, especially if you're progging that that round. So that's why I have it. But anyway, this is the materia setup. Okay, so I'm going to say this now, and I'll probably say it later. I have my prog videos of all the fights, but I do not have my first clear of Sephiroth. I had to, <laughs> for whatever reason, after like after I killed him, the recording either fucked up or I didn't hit the button. But either way, I spent three hours and I went back in and I killed him again and I recorded it <laughs> because I felt bad. So I do have it, but it's my second clear, not my first. Basically, the first fight is against Phoenix and uh, Kajada. And uh, you can actually stop, like you can cast stop on Kajada. And if this is like your first time doing this, uh, I recommend doing that. So you can, you can already ignore Phoenix with this materia set up anyway. But if you bring stop, it will, sometimes Kajada can, can do a lot of damage to, to certain party members with his just basic attacks, especially if you're bad like me. So casting stop while you're learning this fight is helpful, but eventually you won't need it. Uh, basically this fight is, um, yeah, see, this is one of my prog videos. This is where I stop. Uh, so I'm just going to briefly talk about their moves, like as they do them, but basically ferocious lion, it just does damage around him and it's a roar. So if you stand close to him, you'll get stunned. So whenever he does this, just get away. Um, this whole time Phoenix, uh, you can hit Phoenix, but it will do like one damage. And the entire time that you're fighting Kajada, Phoenix is being very, very obnoxious, casting like all of these AoEs. He can cast Fyraga, Surging Flames. There's like this flame explosion, but basically you can ignore all of that with Elemental Fire. So... So that surging flames was like a fire wave targets all three people. You can, you can, perfect, uh, you can perfect block it or just absorb it. Uh, thunderous stomp. Okay, so he's going to jump in the air and come down. And the timing for this is it's not too bad. So when you see when you see the cast of thunderous jump, um, it's an AOE. I want to say it does like mid damage. Okay, so so thunderous stomp. He's going to jump up, and then this the name of the ability is going to come down a little bit. And when it comes down a little bit, then you dodge. So it's like up. So see how it came down a little bit. When it comes down, then you dodge. And you should dodge it every time. Uh, so Phoenix does Incandescent Burst, which is an AoE explosion followed by line AoEs on the ground. But again, if you, have, if you have Elemental Fire, you can completely ignore it. So basically, like, if you have Elemental Fire, you just completely ignore Kajada. Uh, those are his two basic attacks, just two headbutts. Uh, you can just you can just block him. This entire phase, you can completely ignore Phoenix, except for one one move. He might do it. I can't I can't remember what it's called, but basically it's just a dive bomb and it's physical, and you can you can dodge it and you can perfect block it. Um, eventually, uh, this phase does have a DPS check. Uh, if Kujata, man, it's weird because I don't know exactly what causes it, but sometimes he will enrage faster. I don't know why. Maybe I'm crazy. I could be. Basically, Kujata is going to summon uh, a fire or ice or lightning crystal because he's all three elements. So he's going to summon one of them and then he's going to run into it. So, he's, so right now is lightning, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's lightning and ice. Uh, so Cloud can actually absorb his ice attacks, but he has to dodge the thunder, and, every, and the other two have to dodge thunder. Uh, I think if he does this twice, like after he does it twice, will be so. Like phase one is where he does, where he's not like, where he's not attuned to anything. Then he attunes to two of them, 
then he'll do it again, and then the, the last time he will enrage, I'm pretty sure. But you might see enrage maybe once or twice, but honestly, you just, you just ignore like a vast majority of all the attacks, and you just beat the shit out of them. So like Chilling Horn, I'm just going to sit there and tank it because I have Fire Ice. Uh, yeah, you can also just tank this. Fire Ice. Uh, I'm a Cloud main. I use Cloud the most. So, I mean, you can use other people too. It's just... Uh, I found it the easiest with him, but... Um, I mean, that's, that's pretty much this entire fight, honestly. Um, there's nothing. Yeah. The, yeah. The, okay. So this is the move right here. Yeah. So this is the move right here. Uh, you just got to watch out for it. So it's blazing on rush. Uh, I, I don't dodge it cause I'm bad. I don't, um, I don't perfect block it either, but you can, it doesn't do a tremendous amount of damage, but, uh, Voltai. Uh, charge you're gonna need to dodge uh, for whatever reason you uh, the dodge on this is not too bad um, yeah I killed her rip it's kind of like he rears up and then when he comes down then you dodge but yeah but that's pretty much the fight you have to kill Kujata first so then, you know, you kill, kill Kujata. Okay. So after you kill Kujata, so Kujata's dead now. So Phoenix is going to go in the middle and do, and do Phoenix Rebirth or whatever the, yeah, Rebirth Flame. Okay. So this move is, this move isn't even a mechanic because your, your fire elemental is so good that it's just going to absorb it. Uh, so after this happens, um, yeah, he's, he's going to do his thing. He's going to come down. If you don't have fire, if you don't have fire elemental and you don't absorb it, then it does, I want to say probably around like five or six K you can live through it. Um, but then he'll res Kujata again. So now after he res Kujata, uh, yeah, you just kill Phoenix. You just, you just do the same thing. You just beat the shit out of Phoenix. Like you beat the shit out of Kujata. Uh, he will have like an additional, like he'll have some, he'll have some other mechanics, but, uh, but honestly it doesn't matter because everything he does is fire. <laughs> so like this crimson emanation or whatever the fuck that is, it's like AOEs on the ground. Then he does like a checkerboard AOE and then he does like a get out AOE, but none of it matters because you just tank it all with, with the, with the fire absorption. So you literally just stand there, you take all the damage and you just beat the shit out of them. That's, that's pretty much all you do for this fight. Uh, and then after you kill Phoenix, um, keep in mind that this is a DPS check because if you take too much time, Kajada can enrage and do uh, try uh, try disaster or whatever the heck it's called. Um, so, but that's pretty much his fight. Kajada doesn't gain any extra mechanics or anything like that or extra abilities. Uh, he just does the same thing. So you just kill him. Uh, yep. Okay, kill him. All right. So, so that one's pretty easy. You want, you want an easy one on the, on the first one. Okay. So this one, this one is uh Bahamut, Bahamut and Titan. I kill Bahamut first. The reason why is because you can put Titan to sleep. Titan is also like, you can kill Titan first. I've actually never killed Titan first, so I don't know what happens, but I kill Bahamut first because Bahamut is way more deadly than Titan. Plus you can put Titan to sleep. You can CC him for like 15 seconds. So, so the first thing I do, um, this, this, this Bahamut is pretty much the same as the Bahamut that you fight earlier. Uh, he has like pretty much all the same moves. Uh, so this shield here, basically like Titan gives him a shield and he gives Titan a shield or something. It's not really too important because regardless if the shield is there or not, you're still going to have to do damage to him. But basically when you break this shield right here, they will become pressured. They both will become pressured. Uh, Titan does... Titan is pretty much just the same. I'm pretty sure. I don't remember seeing anything new. Um...
Yeah, so you can you can put him to sleep here, but uh, yeah, so he's 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 snoozing. Uh, I, I got grabbed because 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 I'm bad. Uh, don't get grabbed. You can actually perfect block that grab if you have um if you have your um uh, defense materia uh, leveled up, uh, which I have. I have perfect blocked it uh, quite a few times, but just in this in this vod, um, I I didn't. But anyway, yeah. So the shield the shield goes down, um, and you just you just DPS. You know, you just just keep DPS, and um, you do not want to let him transform into his like into his super form. Uh, if he does, it you can still oh, he's snoozing again. So like this form is fine. This form's normal. So he'll gain his blades. It's actually a good form because with cloud you can just punish counter the fuck out of it, uh, which is really good. On that purple weapon, you want the skill that gives you limit break upon blocking. Uh, so whirlwind slash still the same immune 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 for some reason i hit titan because targeting in this game is fucking cringe sometimes so i woke titan up but anyway yeah so this is i mean this is pretty much it's just the standard stuff you know like you know if you fought titan in the normal game uh you know in your playthrough this, it's pretty much the same uh bahamut is pretty much the same uh don't let him transform this whirlwind slash you can you can punish counter the fuck out of this which is really good um uh you can you can perfect guard this uh don't get hit by that that's a really awful move it like puts a bunch of debuffs on you so like right here when he does particle charge like basically all of these little particles around like if you run into them they go on your body and they explode later but he will absorb them and when he absorbs them if you don't stun him out of this he like kind of goes like super saiyan and he starts like diving all over the fucking place and his he has like stronger moves and stuff yeah but basically you know you just kill him uh yeah you just kill him and then titan by himself titan's a big pussy uh, I mean, he just jumped on me right as I said that, but point is, is you know, um, I'm pretty sure you can still put him to sleep. There is diminishing returns, though, uh, so use your sleep, I guess, uh, you know, sparingly. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so that's, I mean, that's pretty much just Bahamut and Titan, pretty much. Um, they're, if for whatever reason you, you want to practice one of them, you can always go back and just fight them singly, you know. Uh, but after this, it's uh, the fight gets the fight gets a little harder. Okay, so this is Odin and Alexander. So the way I did it, I've never fought Alexander first. I've always killed Odin first because after you DPS Odin to like I don't know, I think it's like seventy percent or something, he actually goes away and you fight Alexander by himself. So I don't know what happens when you fight Alexander and don't do that with Odin. Probably bad things happen. So I would recommend fighting Odin first. But basically, Odin is a is another counter boss, so he's really really good to fight with Cloud. You just counter the fuck out of everything and you build a bunch of limit break. You build a bunch of ATB. Punisher is very, very good here. Yeah, so what I do, I kind of just ignore Alexander. Uh, he just kind of stands there anyway. Um, but it can be some really, really cringe shit. So like this move is really good to get because you get so many free, um, so, so many free blocks. Uh, Earth Trimmer is really bad. Um, when it's paired with, um, so basically, basically Alexander is very, very annoying because he will do a magical ability that cannot be countered like with Punisher. And you typically want to be in Punisher for the counter on Odin. You don't have to be, but what, what can happen is that, uh, Alexander will fire these lasers out that are magic and you can't counter them with uh, Punisher. You can counter them with the counter attack ability, which also is a really good ability, which I use that sometimes, but it will happen during the same time that you're trying to counter Odin. So it will actually hit you and then Odin will hit you and then it, you'll go for from 100 to zero like really quick so you just have to keep your eye on alexander to see what to see what the fuck he's doing you know what i mean so like that spear is good all of the like all of these are physical 
He will do Slefnir's. Um, so now I don't know Odin's um, entire gimmick. I have never seen him cast his ultimate, but from what I understand, from what I read, and correct me if I'm wrong, but Odin is a like a get good fight. So the more damage he does to you, the faster his Zanditsuken and his ult will charge. He will give you a warning. It's called like um, Galahorn's something. I don't know. I haven't seen it very often. Like, honestly, Odin is pretty fucking easy as long as you just counter punish. But from what I understand, the more that he hits you, the more that he damages you, the faster his enrage is. That's why Cloud is a really good character to use against him because you can attack and defend at the same time, essentially. See, like this, look at this cringe shit. See, see, look at this shit. See, I wasn't paying attention. Okay, so don't, so don't be like me. So it's called tracking beam. So watch out for tracking beam. See, I saw this pressure bar and I got greedy. That's what happened. So basically he's doing physical abilities and then all these little beams are going to come in and wreck me because I can't, because I can't block them and I don't see him till late. So I'm like, what the fuck? So anyway, so that can happen sometimes. So, um, but anyway, so like every single attack of Odin's you can counter except for one. And it's called like, mm, I don't even think he does it in this phase. He does it like next phase. I don't even think he does it in this first phase. At least I can't remember seeing him. Man, that looks pretty cool actually. Uh, yeah, so anyway, so, you know, once he's staggered, uh, he staggered, beat the shit out of him. Uh, okay, so. All right, so here is where the fight, there's a few different ways you can do it. So the best way that I have found to do it is over the course of this fight, Alexander will put judgment stacks on you and you go up to three, or I'm sorry, they're called karma stacks and you go up to three. Basically, these stacks, they will increase the damage of Alexander's ultimate. So you can actually live through Alexander's ultimate and you can Asuna them, but don't waste your time with Asuna because it only removes one stack. If you're going to take the ultimate, which you can, you can, I've done it in, in like when I was progging this fight, I did it. I burnt all my mana to cast re-raise on myself to take it and I've won. Um, basically, you need to manage your DPS accordingly. You want to have as much DPS as humanly possible after Odin dies and after you break both of Alexander's arms. You want to break Alexander's arms, in my opinion, with the limit break level sync abilities, so that that way you have like m like multiple characters with LBs, and they're like level two or level, you know, level one or two, you know what I mean? Um, so that's why I'm not using my limit break here. Because using your limit break here is worthless. It's literally pointless. There's no reason to use the limit break here. And the reason why is because he's just going to go away. He's going to go away anyway. So you want to save all your damage for Alexander. Because when Odin comes back, he's really easy to kill on his own. Or, well, normally, normally. So then he's going to vanish. He gone. Uh, so now you're just going to fight Alexander. Okay, so... Basically, my LBs are kind of they're kind of bad. Sometimes I've found that you have too much DPS and you won't have enough DPS to kill him after you break his arms. Basically, this is timed and he's going to sit there and do his mechanics. All of these are the same mechanics as before when you previously fought him. And he's going to disappear and then reappear like on the opposite side. And uh, when he does that, it's going to be the same fight pretty much except for you're going to have another stack of karma, which probably isn't going to matter. But you're going to need to break his arms. Now you, can, now, you can break his arms right here, actually. Uh, so what I do is I like to get both of his arms, like, somewhere around, um, you know, maybe 5%, like 5 or 10%. So I don't kill one of his arms right away. So I'll get, like, so you see how his left arm, his left arm's kind of low. You know what I mean? I'll get it a little low, a little more. Um, oh, oh, yeah, sorry. These light pillars here, you can completely fucking ignore them. They do like no damage. Just completely ignore them. It's a waste. It's a waste to kill them. Yeah, they only do like 400 damage per explosion. So you don't need to kill them. At least I've never killed them. Or I've never found a reason to. When they first spawned, I did. Then I was like, wait a minute. They didn't even do much damage. Okay, so now he teleported. 
Uh, so this arm is low. I'll explain why I do this this way. Uh, Earth Tremor, you need to block that. Um, Grand Laser, just dodge. Uh, basically, the reason why I do it is because when he when he enrages, if you break an arm, it cancels the enrage. And then he'll start the enrage again. And then you break the other arm. And it cancels the enrage again. And then he will be pressured. Uh, and when he's pressured, he'll cast his enrage. And then if you stagger him... Okay, so see, Divine Judgment. This is the enrage. So this is where... This is where your DPS needs to be. You need to have as much as possible. So it's very, very, very um, precise. So I'm going to break this arm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break this arm with a double tech. At least I hope so. Okay. Okay, so... So now he's pressured, so it canceled it. So now he's going to do it again. Or maybe I already broke the other arm. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, when he starts it, you break this arm. He cancels it. Uh, then you break the other arm. You know, you don't have to, you don't have to do it that way. You can break one arm sooner. Kind of doesn't matter. But the point is, is like when he, you want at least one arm up when he starts to cast Divine Judgment so that you can break it and knock it out of him. Or, sorry, uh, knock him out of the cast. So now this is looking okay. Basically, after he's pressured, you're going to need to deal all of this damage while he's staggered or a little bit after. Because after he regains from being staggered, he's going to cast Divine Judgment again. So I don't know if I actually kill him before he casts it um, or finish the cast in this VOD. I may... In this particular poll, I may have used the um, the re-raise strategy. Uh, you use the re-raise strategy when you bitch out and you're scared. <laughs> that's what that's what that's what I did. I would like look at his HP. I would look at his HP and be like, mm, "Am I gonna kill him? Nah, I'm gonna use this ATB on fucking re-raise." So, okay, so he's still kind of high. So like right here is not looking the greatest, but I do have another limit break here. So I think I can do it. Ooh, I don't know, man. I don't know if I, do. oh, okay, okay, there we go, there we go. Okay, okay, so you see how close it was? You know what I mean? You see how close it was? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Yo, I got like, <laughs> I, look, man, look, that part's stressful. Okay. That part's stress. If for me, it was stressful. Okay. All right. Anyway, so Odin comes back and, uh, he, so he has a tyrannical onslaught, which is just more, more, um, physical attacks. You just counter punish, um, there's only really one other move, I'm pretty sure. This is the... He gains a bunch of buffs or whatever. Counter punish. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Odin's pretty simple. At least in this setup. Uh, one thing that I do is um, if I don't think I can kill a boss while they're staggered, uh, I will actually uh, use my limit break and my, sy my, my synergy abilities defensively. So I'll use them to cancel the boss's attacks effectively like stunning them. Okay, so, okay, I guess there's two extra moves. Okay, normally this doesn't matter. Like temporal imprisonment basically just takes one of your characters out of battle. Uh, they can still be hit though, but you can't control them and they just stand there. So it just basically freezes them. So right here, he should actually be a little lower, um, but for whatever reason, um, I don't know, maybe I used too much on Alex. Well, I mean, I, I did kill Alexander. So that that's actually probably why he's a little higher here. He can be a little lower, but this is fine too. 
this is fine too. Odin's DPS check. I have never seen his ult. Like I've never seen his his ultimate ability ever, um, except for when I've summoned him. So, um, unfortunately, he got cloud. So I'm just like dicking around. Shimmering blade. That's it. Okay. So the new moves he gets are shimmering blade, which you just you just dodge out of. It's pretty easy to dodge. So shimmering blade, and then the uh, temporal imprisonment. And then that's it. I mean, this is this is all this guy does, uh, pretty much. So, uh, oh, I guess Wolf Hunter is another one. I mean, they're all counter. You just do you use a I mean you just go and Punisher and hold block. That's it. That's how you beat this guy. <laughs> okay, so that's pretty much it uh, for for him. Yeah. So you kill him. Uh, now for this, you want to try to be like fifty percent because the next fight is, in my opinion, much harder than uh than these previous three uh gilgamesh is really really annoying sometimes at least i found him to be really annoying um so gilgamesh is so like if you do the if you do the side quest for the proto relics you'll be able to fight him there to be honest he really didn't give me any problems when i fought him uh for the side quest um, I don't know if he has the same abilities as he does now. So because I don't know, I'll just briefly talk about all the abilities that he does. Um, he has some kind of weird abilities, but okay, that's yeah. So brilliant sweep is just an AOE. Just get out. You can also counter punish it. Uh, this, that, that stomp is really fast and it's annoying. It's a cone, but it's physical. You can, you can also counter it. At least I'm pretty sure you can counter it. Flutter wing dance is he will put these green things down and then he will summon a, a tornado on all of the green things. So you just like, don't hit the tornado, uh, demon wave. You can, uh, perfect block that, uh, draw slash. He charges towards you. You can counter punish this. Uh, I didn't because I'm bad. Uh, my Gilgamesh fights have been have gotten a lot better, especially on the third day of trying this. I'm not sure when this VOD was, but... Oh, okay, so what is this? Boomer? Boomer slash? Uh, basically, if he hits you with that dash move, he's going to put a rune on you, and then he'll do uh, he'll do booming swing, and it basically detonates all the runes. So you can also dodge out of this and you can perfect block it. Uh, Gilgamesh beam, you can perfect block this too. Uh, okay, sloppy sword play. Okay, this move is the most obnoxious piece of shit. And the reason why, you see how it does a bunch of ones here? Okay, well, that's it's actually a lot more damage than just one. But the thing is, is this can actually turn you to stone or turn you into a frog. I don't know the exact details. If anyone does, feel free in the comments to, you know, in, you know inform everyone. Uh, I just dodge it. Basically, you want to dodge it, right? <laughs> so... Even if it didn't give you frog, you just want to get the fuck out of there. So when he does this, you're going to get hit by a few of them. Um, he has another one. I think it's called ephemeral or something. Um, but uh, this move is really annoying. Sloppy sword play. Yeah, so if I would have stood in there, it would have continuously dealt damage and it would have potentially turned me into a frog or stone. And then he, he has another one that's called like ephemeral something. And it, it, it looks very similar and it does the same thing. Then he has another one where he jumps up in the air and comes down. And when he does that, the reason why this move is such a pain in the ass is because sometimes for whatever reason, the AI will just fucking stand there, man. They just stand there and they take the whole hit. And it's so annoying because you get this far because this is like, I don't know, 17 minutes or some shit. How many? Tw okay, so we're 25 minutes in. You get this far. Now, granted, 25 minutes is kind of long because this is, you know, this is one of my prog poles. But anyway, you get in there and the AI just stands there. So just be be prepared for the AI to be stupid. Uh, pinwheel, uh, you can... Uh, okay, so Pinwheel, uh, you can counter punish that, but it's very fast. Um, it is easy to counter punish. Um, like I said, I'm just... 
this is one of my first like few times getting to Gilgamesh, so I'm getting hit by a lot of shit I shouldn't get hit by. But uh, whenever he does Whirlpool Dance, it's really, really good because as you can see, it's healing me because this is Ice Elemental. The Elemental Materia that Cloud has is Fire and Ice, so it actually heals. So whenever you see Whirlpool Dance, you want to like just straight up attack him inside of it because you'll get free free healing. And he stands there for, for a good amount of time. Uh, Lunar Slash is you just dodge it. So there's Whirlpool. Then he's going to do Lunar Slash. It's not too crazy hard to dodge. You just dodge to the left or dodge to the right. I typically would dodge to the right. What it does if it hits you, it knocks you in the air, and then he basically kills you. Um, so, yeah, don't get hit by it. <laughs> uh, Demon Wave, you can perfect block this. But uh, Okay, this move is really annoying. Radiant Geyser. Uh, it's really annoying because I get hit by this all the time because I think of geyser, right? Like magic. But it's actually physical and you can per you can perfect block it. You can also counter punish it, I believe. It's very fast and it's a cone. So it's like an upgraded version of his auto attack where he just kicks the ground, you know? Uh, Flutter wing dance again. Just the tornadoes. Oh, that was good. That was a good perfect block. Okay, so Gingy shield. Uh, this just buffs the shit out of him. Um, I don't really bother dispelling him. I just attack him and the shield eventually goes away. Uh, I'm sure there's a more in-depth way to handle that. Uh, I'm sure there's a better way to handle that. I just don't, I just didn't really fuck with it because I didn't need to. Uh, okay, Gilgamesh pose. If he does Gilgamesh pose, uh, it's basically a jump attack and then he comes down. He'll pin you to the ground and he just kills you. Uh, so you want to dodge that. Gilgamesh has has a few abilities that just instantly kill you. Uh, Fall and Blossom, yeah, just get out of the way of that. Uh, you should be dodging a lot in this fight. At least I did. Uh, spatial Rend. Uh, this is, yeah, so this is an attack. He will jump, come down, and then basically a bunch of magic. So you can counter punish the jump, but after you do, get the fuck out because this is because you cannot. Now you can perfect block this. You can perfect block all of it. I typically will counter punish for the damage, and then I get out. Uh, Gilgamesh beam, you can dodge that or perfect block it. Uh, this this is really annoying because Firefly Ward, he puts a shield around himself and if you melee him, it will stun your character. Uh, there are ways around this. Uh, synergy abilities get around it and so do limit breaks. Uh, Phantasmal Field. He just puts this ring on the ground. Uh, you can actually move through the ring. It only does about 400 damage, uh, so don't feel like you're trapped in there. Uh, there's a couple other enemies that do a similar ring like this that you cannot leave, but this one you can. You can just dodge through. Uh, yeah, Brutal Swing is just a frontal AoE, or sorry, it's a line, a line AoE in front. You just dodge to the, just, just dodge to the side. Um... Dodge to the side, like, right as he's coming down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be good. Uh, Helm Splitter. Uh, this is a really good uh, ability to counter punish. Counter. He just jumps in the air and comes down. Okay, that was really stupid. I fucking ran into the tornado and then got hit by the beam. Okay, so right here, this is like one of the last mechanics that he's going to do. Uh, he's basically going to count down from five. This is the same as the Proto Relic uh, ability. And uh, when he hits one, he's going to do his ultimate. And his ultimate actually doesn't do that much damage in comparison to other ultimates. You can live through his ultimate unbuffed, but you need like, I would say, probably about 80 to 90% HP. But, um, yeah, this is the, uh, yeah, Ephemerality... That's the one where it's like sloppy sword play. You just get the fuck out, man. So he's counting down now. And uh, typically you want to save like limit breaks and stuff. Uh, if he reaches one. Yeah, there's a good counter. Oh, yeah. Counter punish. Uh, if he reaches one, if you use a limit break, it will knock him out of it and he'll restart his countdown. So it's really good to um, uh, to do that there.
Okay, so this is what I was talking about. I don't know why some of the abilities will just randomly turn you into a frog. Uh, because I've got hit by that before and it hasn't. Maybe I've just got lucky or maybe I'm misremembering. But either way, this is why you bring cleanse. For this dumb... <laughs> Dude, look at my guys. <laughs> Dude, look at this. <laughs> this right here, this facial expression right here, sums up better than words. Cloud situation. <laughs> Bro. Oh, my God. That's funny. Okay. All right. So, anyway, this is this is more or less the fight. Now, I know his HP is not really going down that much. Uh, this is definitely an endurance fight. Um, and, like, right here. So, I basically saved my shit. Uh, I'm just going to see if I can, if I live through this or what I do exactly. This is a rough pull. Um, yeah, so, so this, this particular pull is one of the first few that I got to Gilgamesh and, uh, I'm not the best right now of fighting him. Typically his HP would be a bit lower and he would have already been pressured as well. But it's also, um, it also depends on the RNG too. Sometimes you don't get very many openings. Um, he just has a lot of AOE attacks that you just have to dodge or you can't, you, you can't get hit by them. Um, but as you can see, so my character is 4,500, 7k, 6,500. I think Cloud's going to die. Um, I do have the, okay. So Reprieve is really good. It's on the weapon. It's basically like a, a death save. If something were to kill you, instead you go to one, but it can only be activated once per battle. So, so this is very, very important. I don't know what this ability does, this anger dies or whatever. Um, I have no idea what it does. I just attack him and then I pressure him and uh, I stagger him. <laughs> Throughout the fight, he will try to regain weapons. And so you see how it says Gilgamesh lost his Naganata. Well, whenever he equips a weapon, you can knock it out of his hand. And when it does, it lowers the damage of his ult. So that's probably why that I was able to live through it is because I knocked out some of his weapons. Um, so I would imagine if you don't, then, it, then it's an insta-kill. But that's what that means when he loses a weapon. But you're going to naturally dr make him drop weapons just by DPSing him. Whirlpool Dance. Um, it will suck you in, which is why I dodged out first with Barrett. Uh, so basically, yeah, same shit. Uh, he doesn't really gain any other abilities, to my knowledge. Uh, it's just kind of the same shit over and over and over again. Uh, well, I guess he did gain this one. He doesn't really use this too too often. Focus and thrust. It's just another, uh, you can counter punish this. Uh, you can also block it and perfect block it. Uh, yeah, so one and then finishing touch to knock him out of it. Yeah. So this is what I was talking about earlier, using your limit breaks as a uh, defensive. So, so like right here, like I'm kind of fucked, you know what I mean? Cause I'm playing like shit. Um, so basically I'm looking at his pressure bar and he's counting down. There's no way that I'm going to raise this pressure bar up. So I'm just saving my limit breaks to knock him out of his ultimate. And that's it. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah. So one finishing touch is going off. I hate Windows Media Player, man. <laughs> so he does Swordsman Supreme. Okay, so this this move right here, 
Right here is a really, really bad percentage. Like, you do not want him to be right here. And the reason why is because when he does this, he just kind of goes ape shit. I don't know. Maybe it's placebo. I don't know. But I feel like when he casts that, he's faster and he does more damage. He should be dead right now. <laughs> he should be dead right now or extremely low. Because this last bit of this fight, like, now that I'm looking at it, I don't even know if I'm going to clear. Maybe I picked the wrong VOD. But basically, he's going to go ape shit after he casts that. And... And he's just much harder. So if you can, if you can, stagger him somewhere around here. Stagger him somewhere around here and burst him as much as you can, possibly killing him. That said, man, these prog, these prog pulls are rough. Okay, so anyway, so boom. Okay, so he's dead. Jesus, man. Look at all those debuffs, man. Like, fuck off. And then this shit is just horrible. Like, like it's so bad. <laughs> like, I almost wipe here. <laughs> if he would have got that move off, I probably would have wiped. But, okay, so so now, now it's the final fight. In my opinion, Sephiroth was a huge disappointment and a huge letdown. Okay, this is a gimmick fight. A gimmick fight, 100%. Okay, so in this fight, he's only going to do, like, three things. He's going to do, like, shadow chains. He does auto attacks that you counter punish. But besides that, I'll just play it. Because I don't remember. Uh, he has a skewer, which he will stab you and lift you up. You know, like the iconic pose or whatever. It either kills you or does massive damage. I can't remember. Uh, every time that he's hit me with it, it's I'm fucking dead. Uh, at least from what I can remember. So I don't get hit by it. The key mechanic of this fight... The entire gimmick of this fight is shadow is the shadow chains. So like all of these you can counter punish. So like you built up good stagger just by just by counter punishing. So this is this is like his auto attacks are similar to the previous game. You just fucking hold block and you don't think about it. Uh yeah, that ability here when he jumps down you can counter that but then get out because it's an explosion. Uh, you want to make sure everyone is close to full HP at all times. Okay, so this is Shadow Chains. Okay, so this is a really, really, really fucking cringe move. Very cringe. Um, there's, there's a physical version and a magic version. Now, this is the magic version. So he'll do this thing with his arm. It's the magic version. If it's a sword version, he like hunches over a little bit and, you know, like a samurai stance. The magic version, I think that you can perfect block it. I believe I did it on accident one time. Maybe I did it in this VOD. I'm not sure, but I think you can perfect block it. But the one you want to see is the physical one because the physical one, it's possible to evade and perfect block. So this little man, I, I wish I could slow this video down. Okay, I can. So I'm going to slow at half speed. Okay. So shadow chains. So there's going to be this little black shadow that comes out right here. And I'm pretty sure once it gets right about here, that's when you want to block. So see it? You see that shadow thing? So when that shadow thing, it went like this. And right when it gets like right here, if you precision block it, it should work. But uh, this is a pull where I'm like, I'm still kind of learning the fight. Uh, so yeah, he just does a uh, like those line AOEs, uh, shadow chains. This is the physical one. Okay, so I'm gonna pull up my other VOD where you can kind of see the counters. Uh, so keep in mind, uh, as I said earlier in the video, uh, I'm sorry, but I wasn't able to record my first clear, so I, I felt really bad. <laughs> so I went back in and did the run back, and I killed it again. <laughs> um, so I have the Goto Damarung equipped. That's why that's why Barrett's LB is already full. There's one very specific thing that helped me a lot in this fight that might help you. It helped me so much that I really felt the need to talk about it. Um, hopefully it helps you because uh, this is a really fucking hard encounter. Uh, basically, this is where you want barrier um, because it halves all physical damage. So... When he's chasing you like that, 
That's how you know he's going to physically attack you. So with Cloud, you just go into Punisher and you're good. So you actually want him to do that. You actually want him to do that. So then I switched to Punisher, but I got fucked up. Okay, so this is Shadow Change. This is the physical. This is where he's kind of getting in like a samurai stance. Um, so he's targeting Yuffie. So I'm going to switch to Yuffie and I'm going to counter it. Okay, so let's watch it again. Slow it down. This fight, you will win or absolutely get shit on based on how effective your Shadow Chains counters are. This is the whole fight. This is the whole fight. If you can counter Shadow Chains, you will win. If you can counter Shadow Chains, it is an easy fight. It really is. But the problem is, it is extremely precise and it's like at least 20 minutes deep before you get to practice it. So... So basically, right when he starts the dash, that's when you hit the block. See, look, I hit it too soon. So I'm like, oh, shit. So then I hit it again. So you see how he started the dash? So he started the dash, and then he started the slash, and then you hit it. And you'll counter it. And when you counter it, the reason why it's so good is because look how long he's stunned for. Now, he will target an AI, and when he does, my recommendation is you should actually switch to that character and try your best to counter these because um, Shadow Chains, it binds you, and you can't control your character, and when he binds all three characters, he will do Octo Slash. It will automatically hit all of your characters, and the problem is, is like he does so much damage with it. He barely gives you any opportunity to get up and heal because right after he does it, he just starts fucking attacking again. It's really cheap. There's times where if a person barely lives, he will hit them before you can dodge out to like finish them off. So there's the counter. I'm not the best at countering these. I'm decent, uh, but sometimes they still get me. But the thing is, is you don't have to be the best. You just have to counter one or two, you know, and you're, and you're good. So here's another one. Looks like he's targeting Yuffie. Okay, see, so I missed that one. Okay, so did I hit it too soon or too late? Let's see. Okay, I hit it too late. I hit it too late. I can tell you right now. I'm going to pause where I think I, sh I should have I hit it. Oh, my God. It's too fast. <laughs> it's too fast. I told you I'm not the best. No, nah, it's the camera. It's the camera. It's the switching to it that kind of fucked me up. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe like half a second before then. Yeah. But see how this character is bound. This character is bound right there. Okay, so skewer. That's the move. This is the move where he'll raise you up in the air and like fucking insta kill you. Shadow chains. Okay, so, so in this fight, what I do, what is very important, is you use your limit breaks and your synergy abilities as a defensive. Whenever he does shadow chains, regardless if it's physical or magical, don't risk it. Just use a synergy, use a limit break, and cancel them out of it. Don't. Re I, I mean, well, okay, me, I'm a pussy, so I'm not going to risk it. But you can do what you want. But me, right when I see this, I'm like, I'm thinking about it, and I'm like, nah, nah, I'm using my limit break. Because when he comes up here, you're going to be immune. Like, it's not going to work. And not only that, but he gives you more time to build, uh, to build ATB. ATB in this fight is everything. It's everything. So basically, like, I'm trying to build up my synergy, you know, so I can have another defensive. So Shadow Chains, it's another physical. So I want to say this here. I've been getting a lot of physicals. I got, like, one magic in that previous poll. This fight can completely fuck you, and you can continuously get magical instead of physical. You want to see the physical. So I'm going to try to get it with Barrett. Let's see. So I'm thinking about it. All right, let's see. Damn. Nah, it's okay, though. It's okay. 
because all my players are healthy. So it's okay. Yeah, see, I should have hit it when he was like right around here. Yeah, I was a little slow. I was a little slow again. A little slow. But it's all right. All right, shadow chains. Okay, so that's the sh yeah th yeah. This is the this is the bullshit one. I fucking hate the magic one, man. It's it's so cringe. This fight is so bad. It's such a disappointment. At least in my opinion. Yeah. See. Yeah. So now now he's gonna pull everybody together. He's gonna octo slash. Now this is why barrier is so important. Of course, my barrier fell off. Looks like Yuffie is probably gonna die. Cloud is gonna barely live. It looks like. Let's see. Yep. All right. Ooh. Okay, so Reprieve was activated on that. So I can't actually counter... Oh, my God. Okay. All right. Well, this is bad. Okay. Oh, oh. Got it. Okay. So right there. This is when I knew I had a chance. Okay? That's what I mean, man. You counter Shadow Chains, the fight is the easiest fight in the world. You can't counter it, you're not clearing. Boom. Got it. So now I can res. And I'm just going to fucking kite. Okay, shadow chains. Let's see if I can get it again. Come on. Got it. Good shit. Now you see how much now. Now you see what I'm talking about? This fight, <laughs> this fight is a joke. Well, okay, not a joke, but it is significantly easier if you counter shadow chains. And I'm going to tell you what I did. It's a really stupid thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 yeah, I want to go over this real quick. So, there's when you dodge, when he does the physical shadow chains, you want to move your character back at an angle and try to perfect block it at the same time. And the reason why you want to do that is because you're going to do two things at once. You're going to try to dodge and block it at the same time. Slow it down. Now, I'm out of his range, okay? Now, you don't dodge. Don't, don't dodge. It's a trap. Don't dodge because if you dodge, then you won't be able to block. Now, I would have missed this block, but he, like, outranged me. Or at least I'm pretty sure I would have missed it. Kind of looks like I would have missed it. Sometimes the animation doesn't exactly line up with the perfect block timing. But sometimes the hit will actually go through, but the perfect block time is, like, during the animation kind of thing. So... Yeah, so right when I see he's following me, I want to do this. All these immunes. Oh, God. Um, yeah, so he's fine. Shadow chains. Come on, get it. Okay. Whew. Yeah, I didn't even... <laughs> I'm telling you, man. If you can dodge... Or block shadow chains. You're good. This fight is significantly easier, man. Okay, counter punish. He's doing a shit ton of autos. Okay, so see how I recovered? All right, so he's going to shadow chains on... Uh... Okay, so he was going to shadow chains on Barrett, but I used this defensively because I didn't want to fuck with it, man. Shadow chains is the most cringe ability. So so now so now we're looking good. Now we're looking good. Everybody's up again. Um, he's not going to do Octo Slash. If he does, it's only going to target one person. Yeah, okay. So he's going to target one person. Looks like that person's Cloud. So... So I'm thinking here if this is going to cancel him out of it. And I don't, and I don't think it does. Basically, I have to heal Cloud. So once he starts Octa Slash, you can't, you can't cancel him out of it. Like he's just tanking it, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but uh, when he hits fifty percent, it's actually phase two. So I'm going to limit Siphon here because basically whenever you 
the longer in the fight you go, the easier it gets. And the reason why is because every time that he does the shadow chains, eventually you'll build up things to prevent it. So on one thing, I had the synergy. On another thing, I had the limit break. You will have to learn how to perfect dodge or perfect block it. You know what I mean? Because that's the whole fight. Shadow chains is the whole fight. Anyway, I feel like I've talked about it for too long. So just move on to phase two. Phase two is easier than phase one. Phase two... Uh, Phase two, he starts to cast, um, he starts to actually do like abilities as opposed to that grin shit. Uh, oh. Uh, he will randomly just, uh, he'll still do shadow chains. Um, ooh, I didn't even try that. Things can go really bad really fast. Uh, so he's going to Octo Slash me. So it looks like Cloud is definitely... Oh, I have Barrier this time. Yeah, you see, the, you see the difference with Barrier? Holy shit. Look at the difference with Barrier. Yeah, that's why I say like Barrier is... is I don't want to say it's mandatory. You don't have to have it to, to kill him, but it helps tremendously. You cast Barrier and, and it helps so much. Uh, basically, Barrier gives you a free Octo Slash, I guess. You can think about it like that. But, um, dude, more shadow chains. That's all this. You know, fuck off, bitch. Dude, this is such a disappointing fight. Like, this is all he does, man. Shadow chains, Octo Slash. Shadow chains, Octo Slash. That's all he does. It's so cringe. Uh, whenever you stagger him, anyone that is bound by shadow chains is now unbound. So, like, he, he just got Barrett, but because we staggered him. So, like, right here. Right here, like, like, look, I'm thinking about it. I literally pause the game. This is what's going through my mind. I'm sitting on two LBs almost. And I'm like, do I want to even use my LB here? The correct answer to that is no, you don't. Because at any point in time where shit is about to hit the fan, you just LB and you're completely immune to everything. So use your LBs defensively. Do like this, like use an LB during stagger on this guy is a fucking trap. So like I just opt for Infinity's End because, because there is, like to my knowledge, there is no damage check. There is no damage check. So like basically for your stagger, whenever he's staggered, you're literally building up synergy uh, bars and you're building up limit break. I already know I'm going to win here. There's no way he can beat me. And the reason why I say there's no way he can beat me is because any time that he is going to use Shadow Chain... Okay, so basically I have one, two three, almost five ways to get out of shadow chains. And that is if I just choose to use it instead of um, trying to perfect block it. So anyway, his second phase, the reason why it's really easy or uh, much easier is because he imbues his weapon with a certain element. So it could be fire, ice, uh, lightning, or wind. The same as the end of uh, remake. Now, if he does fire, you are completely immune to everything. So basically, fire is just free. And during this part, I don't expend any of my resources. I just auto attack him and use like abilities. The only thing he'll do is auto attack like this and he'll use like Fyraga. But because you're, you're immune to fire, every single thing he is going to do, you're just going to invuln it. So this merciless Fyraga, it's basically two back to back and he will do this for any element. Now I got lucky in this attempt. He went fire first. I don't know if he always goes fire first, but if he goes fire first, that that's free as fuck. So that's what you want to see. Because like right now, I am not giving a shit about anything he's doing. I am just attacking him to my heart's content while he's casting Fyraga. And he's also healing me. So any damage that he does with auto attacks, he's just going to heal me with Fyraga. So like right here, I'm thinking to myself. Right here, I'm like, should I even use my synergy? And the answer is no. Because I'm not in any danger. Like... Why would I use my synergies? Like, look at all these get out of jail free cards. I have three limit breaks for three chains or three octo slashes. I have at least two synergies. You know what I mean? So I have like five get out of jail free cards. Just whenever he does something stupid. Uh, so basically, for
for every element, he will cast that element, then he will use merciless version of that element, and then he will go in the middle and do a mechanic. The mechanic is different depending on the element. So like the ice, it will come down and follow you, so you just have to run in a circle. Basically, the, the fire is like the checkerboard. Uh, I'm going to be honest, I don't know what the light... Uh, the li- Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The lightning is like lines on the ground. The lightning is lines on the ground, and I don't know what the Arrowaga one is. I don't know what the wind one is, but, uh, none of these are too dangerous. So you see how free the fire phase is. Okay. So he's going to do octo slash here, but, uh, this is fucking hilarious because no, you're not going to do it. We're going to do finishing touch. And while it doesn't stun him out of octo slash, I'm completely immune during finishing touch and he still takes full damage. So that's why I say you want to save your limit breaks. You want to save your synergy. Uh, Well, if he does Octo Slash, uh, don't use your synergy because you still take damage, but um, use your synergy for the shadow. But he stops doing shadow chains. At least I'm pretty sure he does. I don't really think he does it anymore. Okay, so now it's Affinity Ice. So I can't sit there and, you know, attack him like an idiot. You know, I actually have to do mechanics. Although Cloud can still attack him like an idiot. So I got really lucky because for Cloud, he doesn't give a shit about fire or ice. So so basically, for this part, I just want to cancel him out of whatever the fuck he's doing because he's getting low. And uh, at any point in time, um, so, so he is effectively dead right now. He's effectively dead because I have damage in two limit breaks worth that amount of HP. Uh, so I think here's where I realize it. And I just like kind of go to town. So I have two limit breaks. So I send one of them. I'm pretty sure I do anyway. So I send one and I still got one in the you know, one in my pocket, you know what I mean? Just in case he does another octo slash. Yeah. So he's dead here. He's dead. So when he's right here, fuck it, send everything, finish this fucking miserable ass fight off. Get the fuck out of here. See ya nerd. So anyway, Jesus Christ. (laughs) Dude, fuck this fight. I'm never doing it again. Anyway, I just wanted to talk about it. Um, I've been having a shit ton of fun with this game. This game is very, very fun. This is a very hard challenge, and hopefully if you guys try it, anything that I said will maybe help you. This is what I did to practice my timing, actually, and I know this is going to sound really stupid. So basically, all I did was this. I had my controller in my hand <laughs> and I watched a VOD of me parrying one of them or perfect blocking one of them. And I reround at 10 seconds. Well, obviously you can do this on like, you know, YouTube or a, a, a better media player. But basically all I did was I sat here and I was like, rewind it. Okay. Do it again. Wait, wait, wait. Got it. Do it again. I'm not even joking. I did this for like 15 minutes. (laughs) And got it. (laughs) I did this for 15 minutes straight. Now, again, I'm not the best. Maybe I missed some when I thought I got it. Okay. That's probably what happened. But all I'm saying is I did it and it really helped because after I did it, I cleared the next pull. Maybe it'll help you. It really helped me clearing all of this shit. You feel good after it, but Sephiroth is a disappointment. Anyway, I've talked way too long. Thanks again for watching, man. Hope you have fun wherever you are in the world. Have a good day. Have a good night and I'll see you later. Peace.